Hey, shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. SeatGeek is the best place to buy tickets online. Use my promo code FOOLISH for $20 off your first purchase. You ever notice how Juan Soto is 20 years old and his career on base percentage is about 400, 405 at the time of writing this? Getting on base 40% of the time when you can't legally drink in the United States seems pretty good to me. After a historic rookie campaign at age 19, the Nationals outfielder is now doing what I would call a victory lap, picking up right where he left off and putting up similar numbers to show his 28 team wasn't just a weird glitch in the matrix. Do you want to know what hitters have had at least 500 plate appearances and a 400 OBP through their age 20 season? Well, since integration in 1947, the answer is only Juan Soto. That's right. No one has come along in the last seven decades with his combination of youth and on-base skills. The next best hitter with at least 500 plate appearances through their age 20 season has a 393 OBP, and I'll shake your hand through the internet if you can tell me who he is without looking it up. If we shift the parameters back to the formation of the American League in 1901, Juan Soto gains three peers in the form of Ted Williams, Mel Ott, and Jimmy Fox, three of the best hitters in the history of the game. So how is it possible that an accomplishment like this is flying under the radar? There are plenty of great young talents in Major League Baseball, but there's only one that plays like Juan Soto. And I think the most appropriate question we have to answer first is, where the heck did this guy come from? What you're currently watching is a pretty common sight for scouts. You're at a showcase of international free agents just a few months before the July 2nd signing day, and there's a Dominican teenager doing his best to impress in the hopes of earning a large signing bonus. In this case, that teenager is Juan Soto. MLB Pipeline ranked him 22nd overall in his 2015 signing class, but they also ranked Fernando Tatis Jr. 27th and Vlad Guerrero Jr. 4th. It's almost like 16-year-olds are really tough to project. The Washington Nationals splashed $1.5 million on him, a fair price for someone who clearly had a lot of potential, but wasn't the number one prize either. Pipeline's scouting assessment of Soto started with five words that pretty much sum him up. Put simply, Soto can rake. And he did just that. Soto made his pro debut in 2016 and decimated the lower levels of the minors, batting 368 and ending the season in A-minus ball. Sadly, he missed the majority of 2017 with injury, but he took care of business in the 32 games he played. After getting his legs back with another stint in rookie ball, he went to single A Hagerstown and shredded older competition as an 18 year old, and his advanced discipline started to appear, as Soto walked more than he struck out. For the sake of comparison, an 18 year old Bryce Harper put up similarly great numbers at that level, albeit over a much larger sample size. After 2017 ended, Soto had become a consensus top 100 prospect, but much like his ranking within his international class, he was just shy of being the real cream of the crop. The fact that he had only played 83 games as a professional surely played into this. But it did set up for a legendary 2018 campaign that would turn both the minors and majors upside down. Not everyone knew of Juan Soto's prowess at the plate yet, but they soon would. Juan Soto's 2018 is one of the most unlikely stories in recent baseball history, and I think what makes this story great is that it took two to tango. Soto obviously brought his A game, and his double A game, but the Washington Nationals deserve a lot of credit for recognizing the caliber of player they were dealing with. 99% of players will have to grind through and reestablish themselves at each level of the minors, but the Nats abandoned those pretenses when it became apparent that they had an MLB ready player right on their hands. Let's start the season back in single A. Pretend you're Nationals GM Mike Rizzo. A scout comes to your office one day and says, Hey, I, I know it's only been 16 games, but I can't help but notice that Juan Soto is slugging 800 in A-ball. Is that good? So you promote him to A-plus ball, and a few weeks later that same scout comes by and says, Hey, I, I know it's only been 15 games this time, but uh, it's, uh, it's happening again. Is that good? You meditate for a bit, and ultimately decide to send him to double A, where he'll surely get tested. The jump to double A is considered the most difficult promotion in the minors, and teams like to have players really take their time and hone their craft at that particular level. Fernando Tatis Jr. played a whopping 103 games in double A, while Vladdy Jr. hit 400, and they still made him play 61 before his eventual promotion to triple A. So, with all that in mind, it's trivia time. How many games did Juan Soto play at double A? Now, the wisest among you may have noted that you can't play Infinity Games at AA, although I think Tim Tebow would if he could. 
However, were you to rotate that infinity sign 90 degrees, you'd find that it becomes the number 8, as in, yes, Juan Soto played 8 games at AA. At the big league level, a Howie Kendrick injury had opened up a roster spot, and the Nationals decided to give the kid a shot. Keep in mind, he'd only played 122 professional games at this point, including a grand total of 8 above the lower levels of the minors. But, the Nats thought they might have something here, so they fast-tracked the 19-year-old Juan Soto to the big league squad. And then the weirdest thing happened. He played really, really, really well, which isn't something you frequently see from a 19-year-old. Don't get me wrong, Ronald Acuna Jr., Carlos Correa, John Carlos Stanton, and perhaps most notably, Mike Trout, have set the league on fire as youngsters. But they were 20. We're talking about 19 years old here. A literal teenager slashing 292, 406, 517, with 22 homers against the best the game has to offer. One of the coolest facets of this campaign was his consistency. There were no real rookie ups and downs. Statistically, his worst month was August, but he still had a 400 OBP and 800 OPS. We know it's rare for a teenager to play in the majors at all, much less play well, but Soto took it to another level. In fact, I believe that he had the greatest age 19 season a hitter has ever had. So let's see if I can prove it. Ty Cobb, Mel Lott, Tony Canigliaro. These are the only three hitters who can compete with Soto's age 19 campaign in terms of performance at the plate. Keep in mind, we're excluding defense and base running. The first two names won't surprise you, but Canigliaro may, as his story is a tragic one of a promising career cut short. One thing that's very convenient is that they had very similar amount of plate appearances, ranging from Cobb's 394 to Ott's 500. That means we can pretty comfortably look at both rate and counting stats. You should all know by now that I love a good triple slash, and you can see that Soto fits in quite nicely. It shouldn't be a surprise that he leads in on base percentage, as he's the only candidate above 400. In this case, I'm not opposed to looking at traditional counting stats either. Soto finishes second in homers behind Canigliaro, and second in RBI behind Ott. But with these players having played in radically different eras, there's a need for a stat that can adjust for different run environments. Cobb's age 19 took place in 1906, back when the average slugging percentage was just 314. Don't discount Canigliaro's difficulties as well, as his 1964 campaign came just four years before the famous Year of the Pitcher. Then there's Mel Ott, who played as a lefty pool hitter in the polo grounds, which had a ridiculously short porch. If you want to learn more about that aberration of a baseball stadium, I'd recommend checking out my Willie Mays video. So we're going to use Weighted Runs Created Plus, a stat that accounts for all these run environments, where 100 is average. This is probably the best chance we have at comparing these great seasons from disparate eras. And, would you looky there, Juan Soto comes out on top. That's how insane he is. For my money, that's the best hitting season a 19 year old has ever had in the big leagues, and he did it right under our noses. Keep in mind, I said best hitting season. In recent years, Bryce Harper put up an age 19 season that was on par with Soto's once you account for defense and base running, but if you're talking strictly about what they did with the bat in their hands, Soto is the clear winner. I know that on base percentage has been a weird fixation for this whole video, but what it really demonstrates is Soto's advanced discipline for someone his age. He played 122 games in the minors and mastered the major league strike zone from day one. It's frightening really. And it leads me to a huge point of this video, which is that Juan Soto's emergence doesn't actually make any sense. Mike, Bryce, glad you could make it. These two were the perfect archetypes for a young superstar hitter. They made a huge impact on the league before they even turned 21. And they actually have quite a bit in common, so we'll put them in column A. And it's our good friend Juan Soto, who is still tearing it up through his age 20 season. We'll put him in column B. So, we'll just be looking at career stats through their age 20 seasons. What do fun young players do? Well, they sure like to use their athleticism in the field. So young and so spry. Through their age 20 seasons, Harper and Trout were both terrific defenders in the outfield. Juan Soto? Maybe not so much. Young superstars will also use that youth and athleticism on the base pass by swiping bags. Trout stole 54 bases through his age 20 season, while Harper added 29 of his own. Soto, however, is solid, but lags behind at 17. StatCast sprint speed has him at the 58th percentile, which is a tad above average, but not what you'd expect from a 20-year-old phenom in the outfield. So, let's get to this whole plate discipline thing. It's the reason we're here. Juan Soto is a freak at drawing walks, but is he really that much better than young Harper and young Tra- Oh! Oh good lord, he actually is. A 15.8% career walk rate at the age of 20. And he's been consistent too, posting 16% and 15.6% in 2018 and 2019 to start his career. 
There are only four hitters who have posted walk rates of 50% or higher in both 2018 and 2019, and they are the aforementioned Trout and Harper, as well as Carlos Santana. One funny thing about those guys is that they aren't 20 years old. Think about it. They have 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 plate appearances in the majors. But Juan Soto just gets to the big leagues after rocketing through the minors and decides, Hey, I'm walking here! It doesn't make any sense. You know who makes sense? Fernando Tatis Jr. He's 20, which is Soto's age, and he's amazing. He's tearing it up, but he tears it up in a way that makes sense. He strikes out a ton, and he doesn't walk much, but he attacks the ball, hits a bunch of dingers, plays a premium defensive position in shortstop, and is an absolute maniac on the base paths. He's just a freak athlete. We've all seen freak athletes. There's a handful of those guys in any given sport at any given moment. But what's even freakier is the rapid emergence of a Dominican teenager who has apparently grown from the frozen DNA of Ted Williams himself. Hey Juan Soto, why don't you make any sense? And why aren't we talking about you more? Right now in 2019, Juan Soto is putting the finishing touches on his victory lap. If you'll recall, the closest person to Soto's 405 career on base percentage through age 20 has a 393 OBP, and that was actually none other than Jason Hayward. Hayward's problem, of course, is that he struggled to follow up on that massive campaign, but Soto is doing just that. He's following up. In fact, he has shown areas of improvement, such as a power increase. His base stealing and defense are progressing as well, making him more well-rounded. And he's 20, by the way, not sure if you noticed, 20 years old, 20, 2-0. How do you even project a future for a guy like this? The three members of the 400 OBP before age 21 club consisted of Ted Williams, Mel Ott, and Jimmy Fox. Are these really Soto's peers? We'll just have to find out. So let's give him his due. Juan Soto is an amazing young player doing extraordinary things. He's not a toolsy freak athlete, he can't buy a drink at a bar, but he gets on base 40% of the time, and he still doesn't make any sense. But you know what does make sense? Using SeatGeek to see your favorite team in person. This is what we call a segue in the biz. SeatGeek is an app that makes ticket buying ridiculously easy. They rate each deal on a scale of 1 to 10 and show you pictures from each vantage point so you'll know exactly what your view of the action will be like. You can order through your browser, or if you're on mobile, you can download the app right in my video's description. So, if you want to see your favorite teams in person and support the channel, use my code FOOLISH for $20 off your first purchase. Once again, big shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this episode of Baseball Bits.